Coronation Day. I love Frozen and I have the honor and privilege of being part of a production of Frozen Junior later this year. And as is tradition with a coronation service, here comes the need for a coronation orb and scepter. And today we're going to be making a replica of the Broadway version orb for Elsa's coronation and we're starting right now. What's up you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny and I am that props girl and I'm all about helping non-professional theater makers, props designers, hobby crafters and decorators create unique props and decor. And today, as I said, we are making the coronation orb for Frozen Junior. During the coronation, as well as the crown being placed on a monarch's head, they also always hold the orb and scepter. As I said, I'm taking my inspiration for my prop from the Broadway version. It's just a little bit more elaborate than the movie version, but they are very very similar this was super fun to make a little bit tricky but certainly doable for anybody and so if you are keen to see that then stick around be sure to smash the like button if you do enjoy this content because it lets me know you want to see more content like this as well as consider hitting the subscribe button so that you don't miss a single one of my uploads and so that you can stay tuned to all of the good stuff I've got coming up in regards to Frozen and other shows and with all that said and done let's jump straight into this video the materials that I used for this prop were a large styrofoam ball, some foam board, stick-on jewels, gold paint, a wooden peg, wooden peg rings and stops, and some braiding which you can use in any color you like. You can also use ribbon as well. I just use this burlap braiding because it's what I actually had at home. I should also mention that this prop is also very budget friendly because all the supplies that I got from this I got in a very cheap store and they were all very very reasonably priced. This entire thing can be made for under $20. Step number one, I found the center of my ball. On mine it was marked but you can do this with a simple tape measure and I got the length of the circumference on the outside with a tape measure. Once I knew how long I needed it to be, I went to the foam board and I measured out a two centimeter width by the circumference length. Now my foam board wasn't quite long enough so I had to make another one and then there's a bit of a join in there but you can't see it on the end product at all. I then went in and did the exact same measurement but with a one centimeter strip. I cut the same circumference lengths in the braiding as well. So I wanted enough to do the top and the bottom of the middle strip and over the top as well. Step number two, I cut a hole in the top of the ball. Now I wanted this hole to be just big enough that the peg could fit halfway down into it. So it doesn't need to be huge. For me, it was just a couple of centimeters and I used a knife for this. Be very careful because obviously knives are sharp, but I just used a simple kitchen knife as my Stanley knife wasn't quite long enough. Once that was done, I used hot glue to glue the two centimeter piece of foam board around that middle mark line. Then I went in and did a loop with the burlap ribbon top and bottom. And when that was done, I went up and over the top of the ball as well. I marked where I wanted the jewels to be. Now I decided to go with an alternating pattern, one facing vertical, one facing horizontal with alternating colors. You can do whatever you like here. It's really not specific. Uh, and I went in and marked where I wanted all of them to be. And then in between the gaps, I cut up the one centimeter piece of foam board that we had and glued them in little strips in between. These strips were two centimeters each.
Step number five, I took that wooden peg and I put two wood rounds on it as far as they would go and I used hot glue to just glue that into the ball. I went back to the foam board and I freehanded this, but you could also use a pattern as well. I made some little petals for the top of our orb. And as I said, I just freehanded these with a marker and cut them out and glued them together to make the petals for that top. I think it's a like orchid or something. Anyways, that flower that sits on top. This was a little bit tedious, but it looked really good in the end and it was worth the time that it took to do, but it's just a little bit fiddly. So just note that getting that rounded shape, I had to bend the foam board a little bit and then really hold it in place while the glue dried. But once that was done, I went in and painted it gold and I used two coats of just acrylic paint. And I recommend when it's dry to go over at least the styrofoam ball bit in Mod Podge just to seal it, especially if you've got like I do kids holding it and you know, actors have sweaty hands, that sort of thing. That's not anything negative. It just is a fact of life to increase the longevity of that paint. I do recommend putting on Mod Podge and not using a spray sealer or anything like that because it's likely to eat away at the styrofoam. The final step, I glued on those gems and I think it looks fantastic. I love how it turned out. Let me know in the comments what you think and whether or not you're gonna give this a shot yourself. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to smash the like button if you did and consider hitting the subscribe button to follow along with all of my Frozen content that I've got coming up for you as well as my regular content. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Have a great week and I'll see you then. Bye.